Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erin and I do mostly budgeting videos like the one you're about to see here. All right, thank you so much for tuning in, spending some time with me. I did promise in my previous video that I would be doing updates more on a regular basis. So even though a whole lot hasn't changed since the last time we talked. I wanted to make sure that I did these regular updates so there's no real holes or anything in my budget by the next time I film and give you guys um, more updates. So I am right now in this 2021 planner and I really, really like this because it is very simple um, but very streamlined but really appropriate if you want to use something inexpensive notebook style. You don't want to get into a fussy budget system. Um, I don't know. I love it. So as you can see on the back, um, this was $3 and that sticker is from Target. So this is from the Target dollar spot. I bought these at the beginning of the year, but the last time I was there, I did see that they still had some notebook styles. I'm not sure if they had the 2021 planner, but they had many, many other notebooks that were in this style. And instead of having this calendar section at the front, they just had kind of like these um, calendaring pages. So if you look closely toward the top, you can see that you can circle the month and the, and the date if you just want to use this like as a daily tracker or um, somewhat of a planner. Of course, um, the pages in this are finite. So, you know, it's not, it doesn't give you all the room in the world. And then when you get back here, it's more of a graph paper, which when it's graph paper, I don't mind, but when it's heavy or dark lined graph paper, um, it's a little bit distracting to me to take notes on or to write anything. So I probably won't even end up using this section of the book. So um, I think that we talked before and I started to update this calendaring section. So I will give you guys another little peek. I have all of our pay dates in here and um, kind of what we were expecting, what's on the schedule, what's on the calendar for the month. This is April. So I did a little forecast with you guys and showed you how we were plugging in um, our expected pays and whatever other income or money we had coming into the house for the month. So I'm going to flip it to the first um solid day of calendaring. Um, this is my March recap. And as you can see, I just put it really plain and simple. Like I said, no fussiness to this whatsoever. So if this speaks to you more, um, if you're more minimalist or you just don't have the time or the energy to create a, a very detailed or involved budgeting system, you can use a plain notebook just like I did here. And it's really easy to capture all the relevant information to your household, um, to your finance life, you know, and everything you need to do. Just, you know, write it in a cohesive way that makes sense to you and you're done. It's, it's all good. So, um, I circled the month of March at the top and then of course I just wrote my own little header in here because I was just recapping the month at that point. So I'm somebody who has used many, many different budgeting systems. I have created my own printables. I have used the Happy Planner. I've used a binder system. Um, I even used to use an Excel spreadsheet, which I really, really love for the organization and for the flexibility that it affords you when you are designing your budget. However, it just didn't work out for me when I when it came to filming the actual content because when I would aim my camera or my phone at my computer screen, there was a lot of interference and um, shakiness to the screen, you know, as you know, if you try to film a computer screen. So um, that didn't work out that well for me. So I've just gone back to the basics, to the old ways. And honestly, I think that a lot of people appreciate this kind of setup because it's realistic. So, um, like I said, if you're somebody who just doesn't have it in you or you don't have the time, you're a busy mom or a busy wife, or, you know, you just have a, a ton going on with work and home and you just don't have the time. Like I said, just writing it out in a clean and cohesive way is really, it, it's super effective. That's all you need to do. So this was my April budget forecast. And I had written this in another 
notebook, but I transferred it to here because I just want to use this for a while just till the rest of my life kind of settles down. You know, um, you guys know I've had like some medical stuff going on and then I'm um, recently a family in town trying to purge the house because we are trying to sell it this year. So when I say purge the house, I just mean getting rid of my own stuff. So I'm really trying to make the most of my time and kind of, you know, get things done and move on. So that's why I've gone to this simple method for now. Now, will I go back to my happy planner? Absolutely, because I love that system. Um, but it does take a lot of setup and, um, you know, it's just a little bit more cumbersome. Not, I mean, not anything crazy, but you guys know what I mean. So we had a couple things happen in this month, which made it probably, um, unless some something crazy happens. This will be our best month of the year as far as income. So as you can see at the top, I have April budget written. We got our stimulus on April 1st. So we were some of the late comers when it came to that. And I'm in, um, I'm actually in my bedroom at my vanity. So this is a little bit of a different setup. Um, but I, that's why I'm kind of holding this up. I don't have a tripod right now available, but this, um, did arrive. So I'm trying to do this. Look at the mess I'm making. Ugh. All right, so we got our stimulus, and that was $2,800 for two people. It was for me, for my husband, and they sent one check. Um, like I had mentioned in previous videos, our other stimulus money did come in the form of an electronic deposit. Um, so I'm not sure what the difference was, but, I mean, beggars can't be choosers, so I'm not complaining. We did get the money. Um, it was really nice, and it just helped us. It always helps. I mean, I, I don't I don't even know what I'm going to do with it yet because I still have it sitting in the bank, but it is a help and I am grateful for it. So on April 8th, we planned on receiving my husband's March commissions from his sales from his new job in March. So they pay out if say we're in April. OK, we are in April. Um, so everything that he's doing this month, he'll get paid the first month of May and so on and so forth. So they have to do a recap, kind of like what we're doing right here, recapping numbers. And um, then, of course, they take taxes out and then they do a direct deposit for whatever his commissions ended up being. So one thing about that and one thing that I ex tried to explain is that he does get two base pays a month on the 15th and the last of the month. So they are after taxes $727. So whatever his commissions are, let's just say this is what he ended up with. He actually ended up with that plus $1458. I guess it would be 727 and 727. I'm probably doing the math wrong. But around 1458. So they take the base pay off the sales. So he doesn't get base pay plus commission. He gets commission minus base pay. So I hope that makes sense. It's just how they do it. I know that people who work commission jobs, there's all kinds of different ways to get paid. But that's just how they do it where he's at. So I am going to go ahead and mark this off. I anticipated $3,000 just when we were doing our figuring, going over his sales, but he actually came through with $34.83 and 78 cents. So that $483 made a big difference for our budget, of course. It's not money we planned on. And if you guys know me and have watched me for a while, you know that whatever I do, whenever I am forecasting a budget or planning for numbers, I always round low or plan low because I never want to count on money coming in that may not show up. So, you know, I don't like to count my chickens before they're hatched. Is that the phrase? Um, but yeah, so that's kind of why I do that. I kind of lowballed it at 3000 You know, we were comfortable. We we knew that it was going to be at least 3000 but then it came through $34.83.78. So it was a great day for us. Um, then on April 9th, I get paid twice this month, and my take-home was fifteen fifteen and change. So April 9th has already passed. So let's go ahead and highlight that off. We're just kind of highlighting as things happen. And then my nephew did pay his rent on the 10th and he pays $350, $75 a week or $175 per pay. And like I've talked about this many times, and I always kind of say these things over and over, not to irritate you guys, but just in case somebody's new to my channel, my nephew, um, he's going to be 26. He is living with us right now. Long backstory, um, but he's a great help to us. Um, we love having him here, but he does have a full-time job. And, you know, I think $75 a week is really reasonable for him staying here for what he gets, you know, laundry, food, um, you know, the utilities that he 
he uses, you know, and whatnot. So um, he thinks it's fair. I think it's fair. You know, if there was a month where he wasn't able to give it to us, that's okay. Um, you know, we don't hold him to it or, um, you know, tack it on, you know, for the next month that he's able to. We don't do anything like that. He did lose his job last year or he was laid off due to lack of work at their company um, because of COVID. And then when his job was reinstated, he started paying again. It took him a couple months, but then he started. Um, so he needed to catch up on his things, on his bills and stuff like that. But anything that he didn't pay us while he was laid off is just that's just life. Um, so we don't charge him for anything like that. It's not really a business transaction. It's his way of contributing to our household and we just all feel comfortable with it. So on April 15th, my husband got his first base pay for the month. And like I said, that is $727 after taxes. And now um, coming up this Friday on April 23rd, I will be getting my second paycheck, which again is $1515. It really doesn't change. It did change last year because of COVID because we got a pay reduction um so I my figures were different last last year um for the most part but then um the pay got reinstated and I'm just back up to what I was making before that so um that is coming so I'm not going to highlight that and what else is coming is my husband's second base pay for the month so in total, um, I planned on $10,634. Again, this is an outrageous amount of money for us to be bringing in for one month. Um, and it's, you know, in large part due to the stimulus, which will not be repeated this year. I mean, oh, who knows? I mean, I shouldn't say that and, and jinx us all. Um, maybe it will, and that would be nice. But um, I'm not counting on any further stimulus money. So that increased our income almost by $3,000. So that's, you know... That's huge. That's huge for us. Um, and then now that my husband is getting paid on a more regular basis, um, our income went up. So I'm really happy about that because there's a lot of things that we want to do. We've been putting plans and thoughts and things like that on hold for a really, really long time. So I'm really excited to get back into the mode where we're able to make some plans and look forward to um, you know, some different things, you know, so we'll see. So my variables, I didn't even list my variables include things like groceries, gas money. Um, I had a lot of co-pays for all the medical stuff that I was dealing with still coming in, um, or my, my deductible portion. Um, my insurance has deductibles for hospital. It has deductibles for doctors. It has deductibles for testing. Um, and then I have an 80, 20 system. So they pay 80, 80% after deductibles are met. And then I pay 20 so it can be quite pricey, but so far it's manageable, so I'm not complaining. Um, so that would be a variable. Um, other variables would be my brother was in town. We celebrated his birthday late. Um, you know, we had a really big cookout for the family. And then we took everybody out on a different night for dinner, you know, to have a celebration out. So those types of things, you know, um, are variable expenses. And, um, you know, not, and when I say variable, I just mean things that could change. So next month I might not have, you know, any extras besides food, groceries, gas money, food and groceries are the same thing, but food, gas money, dog food, miscellaneous, whatever. But, um, you know, special occasions I put in the category of miscellaneous. Um, so we had a couple other birthdays we had to um, buy gifts for this month. And then next month, of course, we have other things coming up. So I just put those variables basically under the miscellaneous umbrella. Um, and then remaining, that is yet to be said because I haven't reconciled our budget for the month. Um, we're still in process. So that is something that I will need to do, um, you know, toward the last day of the month and stuff. I want to look at everything, do a recap and, and see where we were and um you know how we managed our money and what we ended up with at the very end when everything was said and done and paid for so the actual total so far i plan on 10,634 the actual total so far is $11,117.78 i don't anticipate that changing either because this is all the income we have coming in so unless somebody just out of the goodness of their heart drops a, a fat check in our mailbox for no reason, um, we are not getting any other income. So I think this is going to be the number that we settle with in our final for the month. Um, but that's basically it. I wanted to share this with you and, um, you know, kind of get this channel moving again, a little lifeblood in it because, um, you know, I had pro probably an entire month where I was just like, 
not really talking about stuff, not really doing anything, trying to get used to this transition um, with my husband's new job and stuff. And I just didn't have a whole lot that I felt was interesting enough to share. But um, I do feel like it is a conversation with a friend. Somebody had commented that. That was really, really nice and thoughtful um, to say such a thing. Um, and right now I am continuing to move my money from Capital One into my local bank. Um, and if you watched my last video, you know that I had a bit of a delay with Zelle and it took four business days for that money to finally hit my account when I transferred it from Capital One to my local bank. Um, and they said it was because Zelle did not prioritize it as an immediate transfer, which I don't buy because I talked to somebody at Zelle. Um, so I think it was my local bank holding things up, um, which is unfortunate. Um, I hate delays like that because I don't see any reason for them. Um, of course, I'm not, I don't work at a bank. I don't know the ins and outs or the background to how things work. However, um, the money's out there somewhere. You know what I mean? So put it somewhere. Put it back at Capital One or put it in my local bank. Just put it somewhere. That's what I felt like. But anyway, so that is that. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I have some plans for another channel, actually, that I have been kicking around. I've been trying to get my creative juices flowing. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes, you know, you get stagnant, which is how I felt about a month ago um, when it came to my budget and numbers because nothing was changing. I felt ridiculous. Um, but I have some other ideas and stuff like that. So um, just some things that I'm working on. But I honestly appreciate you guys so, so much. Um, it means so much to me that you're still tuning in. And I hope that you continue because I anticipate that things are going to um, mix up a lot this year, especially if we hopefully sell our house this summer and get into a new one. And that is going to change a lot when it comes to numbers. So I hope you're doing well. I hope you're feeling great. I hope that you're safe and healthy. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed, I would love if you stuck around and did so. And yeah, I hope I see you guys on my next one. Take care. <laughs>